For the purpose of setting up the scenario, this man overboard will occur while transiting on a heading that is set into the swell. Upon hearing the report of the man overboard, you need to look and make sure there is actually a person in the water not hanging over the side. Also, reduce your speed as you're verifying the report. Based on the conditions, take a look and determine which direction is safe for you to conduct the upswell turn. And notify your crew before you begin the turn. After your crew has been informed, bring both throttles to full ahead. Directly after reaching the full extremity of the throttle mount, reduce your inboard engine throttle RPMs to clutch ahead and simultaneously place your helm hard over in the direction of your turn. Remember, your inboard throttle will be the one that will cause a drag in the direction of the turn. Once your boat is beamed to the seas, keep your helm hard over in the direction of your turn and place your inboard throttle to full ahead and continue with the turn. Now that you have the 47 stern exposed to the swell, reduce the engine speed on both throttles and set an angle towards your original track line. Ensure that the angle set is no more than 45 degrees in comparison to the direction of the swell. Keep driving at this speed and angle until you're about one boat length away from the original track line. Without adjusting your speed, Square the stern of the 47 up to the swell and notify your crew that you'll be running down swell and will be conducting a heavy weather turn. This is also the time that you need to look behind you to make sure that it's safe to speed up and initiate your heavy weather turn. Once you've determined that it's safe and that you're on the backside of any swell, place your throttles to full ahead and begin your down swell run. To initiate your heavy weather turn, place your helm hard over in the direction of your intended turn and simultaneously bring your inboard throttle to clutch ahead. This will cause a drag on the inboard side of the turn, forcing the bow of the 47 to come around quicker. Now that the 47 is beamed to the swell, and 90 degrees perpendicular to your wake. Place your inboard throttle to clutch astern. Remember to say to yourself, click, click, pause as you're manipulating this throttle. This helps you recognize these critical throttle positions. The first click being the neutral position and the second click being the clutch astern position. Pausing in the clutch astern position allows you to shift into reverse without causing any damage to the reduction gear. Once you hear the reduction gear re-engage, the next step is to place your inboard throttle to full astern, shift your hand over to the opposite throttle, and begin to ease the forward engaged throttle to clutch ahead while centering your helm. Just before you're square to the swell, place the forward engaged throttle to neutral. Let the inboard engine that's engaged astern finish out your turn and cancel out any forward momentum that you may have. This helps preserve the distance between you and the PIW. Once the boat is squared to the swell, move the astern engaged throttle directly to neutral. After you've determined that it's safe to do so, have your crew enter the appropriate recess to recover the MOB. As they're getting set up to recover, set up your sight picture. For the conditions depicted in this video, it's good to keep the PIW between the bullnose and the first set of paired bits. You'll notice on the bottom right hand screen that as the crew is getting set up in the recess, the coxswain is keeping the bow square to the swell 
and maintaining the sight picture necessary for a safe and effective approach by conducting just a slight pivot. Only use as much power that is necessary to maintain this aspect. Once you've verified that your crew is in place, notify everyone you're about to make your approach. In a moment, you'll notice that the coxswain does not place both throttles into neutral prior to beginning the approach. They simply maneuver the astern engaged throttle to clutch ahead, matching it with the forward engaged throttle and letting the reduction gear re-engage. This helps to ensure positive control over the boat. Just remember that everything is dependent upon the circumstances. The input you choose to provide is completely dependent upon the conditions of the environment that you're operating in at that moment. Under normal circumstances, with the engines in neutral, you will begin your approach by first notifying your crew of your intentions. Next, you will typically maneuver the throttles to clutch ahead, let the reduction gears engage, and then increase your RPMs to full ahead. Once you have enough momentum to keep the boat tracking in a straight line, and to keep the PIW within your sight picture, reduce your engine RPMs to a range that's within 900 to 1400 RPMs. If needed, only use a minimal amount of helm. Once you're about a boat length away from the PIW, reduce your engine RPMs to just clutch ahead. Due to your elevated position, you will lose sight of the MOB as the bow flare begins to obscure your line of sight. Immediately upon losing sight, call out to your crew, lost visual, while simultaneously manipulating throttles from clutch ahead to clutch astern. After you have made this shift with the throttles, place your hand on the outboard throttle to prep yourself in the event you need more stopping power in order to allow the crew to pull the PIW aboard. If additional power is necessary, maneuver the outboard throttle quickly to full astern only for the amount of time it takes to stop the boat with the PIW situated right at the recess. Once the PIW is at the recess, immediately shift both throttles to neutral and stay square to the swell. After you've identified that it's safe to do so, have your crew and the survivor relocate to the aft deck. Do not fixate for too long at what's going on in the recess. Trust what your crew is telling you, keep your eyes on the swell, and stay square. 